Hi folks, welcome to 9.3, part two. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at three examples where we're gonna focus mostly on graphing, or I'm sorry, on solving algebraically, and then we'll graph it just to make sure that we've got the right answer, okay? And to review how we graph by hand and without a calculator. All right, so let's begin. We're gonna take a look at uh, this equation right here, we're going to say this one is going to be the green one, and um, this one over here is going to be the pink one, okay? <clears throat> so let's start with the green one over here, and we're going to notice that both the green one and the pink one both have the form like x squared plus y squared equals a number. So my strategy is going to be trying to use elimination, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first equation, and then I'm going to take the second equation, and I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1. So negative x squared minus y squared equals negative 10. And so when I say everything, I mean including that number as well, okay? And now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and combine these two equations. So I get 4x squared minus x squared gives me 3x squared. y squared minus y squared gives me 0. And 13 minus 10 gives me 3. All right. So I can see right away that these y squareds have been eliminated. So that's good. All right. So now I have 3x squared equals 3, and I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 3, and I'll get x squared equals 1. And now I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides, but I am definitely going to remember that I have plus or minus the square root of 1, okay? So what does this give me? This gives me x values, but I'm going to need to go ahead and find y values. And so I can do that by choosing either the green or the pink to plug in my x values. Now the pink has slightly smaller numbers, so I'm going to go with the pink one, but it doesn't really matter which one you use. All right, so 1 squared plus y squared equals 10. So I get 1 plus y squared equals 10, y squared equals 9, and y equals plus or minus 3. OK, now I know that if I put the negative one in, I'm going to get this and I square it. I'm going to get the same thing. I'm going to get one. So really, I have X as plus and minus one and Y as plus and minus three. So that gives me four solutions all together. OK, so I've got whoop, I've got one comma three. I've got one comma negative three. I've got negative one comma three and negative one comma negative three, all right? And so I have four solutions. It seems like a lot, but if we go back to these two and think about their shape, okay? Um, let's start with the pink one over here. I actually have a circle with radius equals the square root of 10. Now, I know that that's a gross number, OK, but it's about, oops, it is about 3.16, OK? So I'm going to attempt to graph a circle here that has a radius of 3.16. So 3 and a little bit, 1, 2, 3 and a little bit, 1, 2. And we'll see how this goes. All right, not bad. We'll just sort of make this a little bit bigger. All right, good enough, okay? So I've got a circle that's like three and a little bit, but this green equation, this is actually an ellipse. And I know that if I go ahead and divide everything by 13, I will get x squared, 4x squared over 13 plus y squared over 13 equals 1. So from the center, I'm going to go up 
and down plus and minus square root of 13, all right, which again is kind of a gross number, but that should be about, so square root of 13 is about 3.6, all right? So if I zoom in here, whoop, I'm gonna do about 3.6 and about 3.6. But my x value, I'm actually going to go square root of 13 over 4. All right, and let's see what number that gives us. And that's about 1.8. All right, and so that means that I'm going to go about 1.8 and 1.8. And if I connect these, I end up with something kind of like this, okay? Now, on an exam, I wouldn't give you such gross numbers here, all right? But if I do give you no calculator, it's likely that the algebra is going to work out to be really nice numbers, okay? And we can see here, I'm going to go ahead and mark these solutions with, uh, with yellow points. All right, so on our grid, we can see that this is a solution, this is a solution, this is a solution, and this is a solution, all right? So we get four solutions on the graph, four crossings, and we get four answers algebraically, all right? And that's good because we really wanna make sure that our graph and our algebra give us the same answer. All right, let's take a look at number seven, all right? So, what shapes do we have? We've got x squared minus y equals zero, which is really y equals x squared. And we know that that's just a regular parabola. So I'm gonna go ahead and graph this one right now, okay? So I've got zero, zero, one, one, two, four, three, nine, and I'm going to go ahead and connect those as well as I can. Okay, so I've got my parabola right there. And what do we have for this other equation? 2x squared plus y equals 12. That's really y equals negative 2x squared plus 12. And that's going to be a parabola that has a vertex at 12, but is kind of facing down, okay? So let's just plug in some numbers and see. If I plug in 1 for x, I'm going to get 10 for y. If I plug in 2 for x, I'm going to get 4 for y. Ooh, I think I found our solutions. And so if we go ahead and connect these, ooh, this is a terrible graph but we should end up with something like this. And we are thinking that our answer is actually going to be right here and right here, all right? So at the end of the day, when we do this with algebra, we should end up with two solutions. So let's see how we can do it with two, all right? I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Oops, nope. y equals x squared and y equals negative 2. No, I don't want to copy those. I'm going to start from the beginning. x squared minus y equals 0. And then 2x squared plus y equals 12. Now, why am I going ahead and just stacking these two equations? Because I noticed that the y's are the same coefficient, they both have a coefficient of one, and they're gonna get eliminated because one is positive and one is negative. So now when I combine my equations, I get three x squared equals 12. I'm gonna divide by three, x squared equals four. And again, when I take my square root, I better end up with two answers, x equals positive or negative two, okay? Now, if x equals positive or negative 2, I can plug it right into the green equation to get my y's. That's probably the easiest one. So y equals 2 squared, which gives me 4. And that makes sense because my solutions are 2 comma 4 and negative 2 comma 4. 
Okay. So this one I think would be much more in line with something I might ask on a test on a non calculator. The graphing is pretty straightforward and the algebra falls out pretty nicely with the numbers. Okay. But the biggest check here for yourself is make sure are you doing plus and minus when you take the square root? Okay. Now let's take a look at the last example, number eight. All right. So we're going to go with our uh, green again and our pink. And even though we've been working with a lot of complicated things, this y equals x squared minus 1 is just a parabola that's been shifted down 1, right? That negative 1 is like our d value in all of the graph transformations that we've done. That allows us to draw a quick picture, 0, 0, or 0, negative 1, 1, 0, and negative 1, 0 these two points and we go ahead and graph them okay and then even though this pink equation looks a little weird i'm going to go ahead and add y to both sides and add one then i get y equals x plus one and this is just a line with a slope of one that goes through the point zero comma one slope of one slope of one slope of one slope of one yeah it looks like these two are gonna cross in two places okay in particular they're gonna cross here and here okay so that means when we do our algebra we better end up with two solutions Okay, so in this case, I could use substitution to do this one and this one together, or sorry, elimination, but I couldn't do this one and this one with elimination right off the bat because the letters are not in the same place. They're not the same kind of letters. The green one has an X squared. The pink one has an X, all right? So in this case, I would say either we do elimination by changing the form or we do a little bit of substitution. I'll leave that up to you, okay? I'm gonna do substitution only to show us that method because I don't think we've used it yet. And everywhere I see a Y in the pink equation, I'm gonna go ahead and put in X squared minus one, All right? So X minus X squared minus one equals negative one. Okay. And one thing I really want us to notice here, I made sure to put these parentheses here because if I don't put the parentheses here, I'm going to get the wrong sign later on. Okay. All right. X minus X squared. Oh, negative times negative makes that a positive one. All right. Now I like my X squared to be positive. So I'm going to move everything to the right hand side. So I'm going to get 0 equals x squared minus x, and then negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. I'm going to go ahead and factor that. x squared minus 2x plus x minus 2, and x times x minus 2 plus 1x minus 2. That gives me 0 equals x plus 1 times x minus two, and that means that x equals negative one and x equals two. I'm gonna pause for a moment because these two x values should match the x values of the yellow points I have on the graph. And so this is indeed x equals negative one and this is x equals two. So that's good, we're headed in the right direction. Now, which one is the easiest equation of them all to plug our x back into or the most efficient? I think it's going to be this one, y equals x plus 1, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put that into y equals x plus 1 and y equals x plus 1. And check out what I get, y equals 0 and y equals 3, which gives me precisely the two points that I have here. 
negative 1 comma 0 and 2 comma 3. Okay, so sometimes it's actually really helpful to be able to do it two different ways, graph it and use algebra so that way you can actually make sure that you're correct, All right? Thanks folks, have a great day.